this wasn't the vibe I was going for. But we move. Yo. So excited. I am so annoyed at myself. I told you I can't hold the task. Hey everyone, I'm Uwa, I'm a first year medical student at the University of Nottingham and welcome back to my channel. So today we've got a whole different layout, a whole different setting, a whole different background because we're doing something a little different today. I'm going to bake today and you guys are going to do it with me. Well actually you're going to be watching me bake. I'm going to be answering your questions. So the other day I put on my story and I asked for you guys to um, ask me some things about med school. So we're going to be doing a come bake with me and a med school Q and A as you've probably already seen from the title. So um, I'm going home tomorrow. I'm actually surprised my mum for her birthday. It's gonna be the Easter break anyway, but I told her that we don't finish our lectures until next Friday. Um, and I said I won't be home till then, but I'm gonna be surprised her tomorrow on her birthday. And I thought I might bake my family as well because they love my baking. I thought it'd be a nice treat for everyone as well. Something a bit different on my channel, something a bit fun and exciting. With all that said and done, let's get on with the baking. Today I'm going to be making um, white chocolate and raspberry blondies and then also white chocolate and raspberry cookies with the blondies. It's just a recipe I found online. Um, I will link that below in case you want to try it. Please leave a like and please subscribe to my channel. Um, I'd really appreciate your support. Thank you guys. So I've just greased the pans. So I'm going to do the cookies first because they take less time than all of them. The cookies serve like apparently 48, but I'll see how many I can get out of them. The blondie serve like 16, but I'm gonna make 18. Um, I've got a glass on as well, like you know it means business, my glasses are on. So it's an American recipe, but I'm just gonna try my best to convert everything to like grams instead of cups. So our first question is from Beth asking for a bacon tutorial. She you know, like she replied in the thing, I just messaged her straight away and I was like, sis. This is what I'm doing. Beth, our wish is my command, so here we go. So the next question is, what other degrees you consider before medicine? And then there's one that's similar to it, let me find it. If you weren't studying medicine, what would you study? The only other degree that I seriously considered was midwifery. So I really wanted to be a midwife, I really wanted to see baby being born, I wanted to help mums throughout the entire like pregnancy journey, that was really like appealing to me. Um, let me just measure this out first, I, I can't multitask. Oh, I should have. Oh no, I should have put, um, I should have sipped it through. This is what I mean. Right, I'm gonna sort this out, then I'll carry on recording because it's just not gonna go well. I've sorted the flour fiasco out, so I've got it in a smaller bowl. Um, and now I'm gonna add the salt to that bowl. Like I said, with the midwifery, I really wanted to like, take months of the whole pregnancy journey. That was just really appealing to me. And it's something that I really wanted to do. Um, and that was like in year nine to 10. And then I've got another video coming out where I talk about this in a lot more detail. But then in year 10, I just fell in love with science and I wanted to see like, what science degrees there were out there. So then I found out about medicine, just did the research, and then, yeah, applied to medicine. It's been love since then. What else I'd be doing if I wasn't doing medicine? Um, I reckon I would, I don't know, I reckon I really don't know. It might be something like, because I am a very like creative and very artsy person, I just really enjoy that. So yeah, it might be something that's kind of artsy. I'm not sure though, because I really do enjoy learning these things myself like i enjoy uh, learning how to make the post i make myself and oh 128 bang on get me one of my flatmates came in and i just paused it we just had a little chat but um yeah so i was saying like i don't know if i really if i really want a degree one of those things because it's something that i know i can teach myself and learn myself so i don't really know like honestly probably a really crappy answer but i've never probably considered it anything other than medicine um next question is med school what you expected so far it is and it isn't like i knew it would be full on i knew it'd be very fast going but the pandemic has like had a massive impact on my med school experience and so my expectations of course like i really wish i had more patient contact now um well, obviously that's out of anyone's control. I think first semester definitely wasn't what I was expecting. Like, it was, it was my own fault that I didn't take the time to look into the course properly. All I saw was that you learned molecular biology in first term. What's one thing you wish you had done during your application process and year 12 and year 13? So I'm guessing by that you mean what's something that I had done differently? Between year 12 and year 13, I wish that when it came to my UCAT, I just calmed down a lot more because yes, it's an important exam, but I just, 
I got really stressed about it and that really affected my performance on the day. Like before my UCAT day, I was literally working as hard as I could um, and I was getting 800s and I was getting really, this is why I want no sugar, um, and I was getting really, really high scores on all my mocks. Um, like literally, I still got a good score on the day, obviously, if not, I wouldn't be studying medicine. The score I got on the day was different to the ones I got on the mocks, and that's because I was just so nervous. Like, the night before, I didn't, have any, I didn't have any sleep. The morning of, I couldn't even eat breakfast, I was that like, nervous. I just psyched it up so much. I just wish I better understood that after you submit your application, it's just not that important. So in year 12, I wish I enjoyed myself a bit more and I wasn't so hard on myself. Because like, I don't know, like, I knew I wanted to go to med school, I knew I had to work hard to get a good grade, I knew it was were difficult. So right from the beginning, I literally was just on it and I was working hard. I was literally from the very first week, I was in the library at breaks, no, not even at breaks, in my free periods. I still need to cut myself some slack and some free periods I spent in the canteen with my friends or I'd go out for lunch or whatever. And I still enjoyed college. I don't know how when I was always in the library, always studying, but I made loads of amazing friends which I'm really grateful for. But I just wish we could go back, is it like two years now? I think so, I don't really know. 20, back to 2018, three years nearly. Um, I just wish I could tell myself that you don't need to be as on it as you are. Like you can relax a little bit. Like I said, I did do a lot of work, but I'm glad that I did because it paid off in the end. And then for year 13, um, I would have said don't revise because I'm getting cancelled anyway. No, I'm kidding. The biggest thing I would have done differently is thought about my fifth option, my fifth choice differently. In hindsight, it's not so much of a big deal because um, I'm doing medicine anyway. But at the time, I applied to pharmacy as my fifth choice, one second. And again, I talk about this more in another video. So I applied to pharmacy as my fifth choice, but I knew nothing about pharmacy. And like, the reason for applying to it was like, I thought if I'm not gonna do medicine, I don't wanna do anything else. So I didn't really put much thought into my fifth choice. That wasn't the right mindset to have, the right mentality to have. But yeah, I ended up getting rejected like two days after I submitted my application. And I was so gutted, because that was the first university that I heard back from. So I had to wait like nearly another month before I even got my first interview invite. And that whole time it was just stress. And I was like, if the rest of the four reject me, that's pretty much my dreams to do medicine crushed. What's been the biggest surprise for you at med school so far? Honestly, anatomy. Like, obviously, you always get told there's a lot of content in med school. And it's not difficult content. Which, yeah, it's not difficult content. It's just there's a lot of it. This doesn't look too right. Looks a little bit dry. Have I done this right? One sec. Oh, Meant to add the egg first. I told you I can't multitask. I did say it. Don't know what to do. I'm just gonna keep doing me. I'm just gonna keep on falling flour in and see what happens. Oh, I might just add the egg now. Yeah, I think I'll add the egg now. Ooh, this is a disaster. I don't know how people crack the egg on the table. Whoops, oh. Just got egg all over the table. <laughs> this is really not going well. So I'm there thinking it looks dry, and that's because it was dry. Like with anatomy, there is so much, like you'll learn about the whole body. And something that I didn't really understand until recently is that you don't have to learn about anatomy's entirety. You don't have to learn every single muscle attachment or every single muscle origin. You have to learn what's clinically relevant, but more importantly, especially for Nottingham, because we get tested based on learning objectives, is you have to learn what's relevant to learning objectives. And then afterwards, then you can start building out and branching out and then learn all the little extra bits. So yeah, the biggest surprise for me has definitely been learning anatomy, finding what works for me. I am a tiny bit worried because approaching Easter and I feel like I've still got no revision technique for anatomy. Like, Almost every time I revise it, I find something that I think works better for me and I change it. Oh, I'm so annoyed at myself for messing this up. Silly me. I've still got loads of flowers and it's already getting really dry again. Oh, whoops, thought I had makeup on. <laughs> this is a real disaster. Anyway, in the meantime, let's answer the next question. What advice would you give for picking accommodation? Like, there's no general advice, I think, because you can't pick your flatmates. Just make sure the accommodation you're picking suits your preferences suits what you want would you mind sharing a bathroom how close do you want to be to the med school that's if you are going to med school how close do you want to be to the university into the campus do you want cell catered or do you want catered halls both have the perks and both have their um 
not so perks, the disadvantages, I guess. Um, and then also the shops in the area if you are South catered. So I didn't really look at this till like came to moving in, but um, luckily there's an Audi literally about a 10 minute walk from my accommodation. Oh no, I've really messed this up. So I managed to resurrect the dough and I think I did a good job, like it's not dry anymore. Um, it actually looks like dough. So I'm gonna just start dishing out little balls. And then I also like, um, put, I'm putting raspberries in, I think I already said. I also like crushed up the raspberries. Advice for picking a uni. Look at how particular uni teach the course you're applying to and compare that with how other units teach that course and which style would you prefer. Also talk to current students and then see if they enjoy the teaching and if not, why not? Why don't they enjoy it? Um, what are the perks of it? What are the lecturers like? Because the lecturers can make such a big difference. And then again, consider the accommodation for the uni. Maybe if you're living from home, consider the commute. Look into what the area is like. Is it in the city? Is it in a more rural area? Oh, something I forgot. I'm going to put white chocolate in the middle so like when they bite it it's like a white chocolate surprise <laughs> oh no i have to eat it oh this is so wet that's gonna be a really big cookie oh it's just way too wet right so note to anyone who's planning on making these um defo use the raspberries when they're older dilemma right so one chocolate is yeah one chocolate is in the center and i'm gonna somehow wrap it up i just don't want to touch it because it's just so wet that definitely needs to go in the fridge. <laughs> it's a disaster, it really is. That's one cookie ball. <laughs> but yeah, another question. How are you so organized? Honestly, like, don't be fooled by what you see on my TikTok and yeah. I'm really not that organized, especially the last few weeks. I've been everywhere. In January, I was the most organized I've been in a very long time. I was making um, weekly timetable based on my own university timetable and like, work around that. I was tutoring like five students, five or six students at that time. And honestly, like everything was just going so well for me. I had time to relax, I had time to edit my YouTube videos. Even then you would notice I was posting weekly. The past few weeks, it's just been like, my uploads been everywhere. I've been so tired, I've been so drained. Cause I've just not been organized at all. With like the work that I do show though, I do get through that much work in the day. Um, but it's just not very structured. Like the other day I worked until 10 and I hate doing that, I hate working late. That's because I hadn't planned my day properly. So I just had to sit at my desk and get the work done until I got what I wanted to get done. Would you recommend having a part-time job in med school? My answer is, not really like i don't know everyone's different but for me i just don't think you should the amount of content you get in med school when you're not doing your university work you really want to and you really should just chill and just relax if not you will face burnout like i do tutoring and i've reduced my hours massively and i've had to let a student go this week i just told them that with the amount of stuff i'm dealing like, with med school and things outside i just said that like i've just got a tremendous amount of things going on in my life right now and tutoring is something that i enjoy but i have to cut back on it just to reduce the amount of stress that i'm feeling it takes me between two hours and two and a half hours to fully plan a lesson to get resources to set them homework um and just make sure i've got everything inside that lesson and that's outside of teaching time so it was taking up a lot of my time but yeah my point is that unless you think you'll be able to handle it i wouldn't recommend a part-time job for med school i just don't think it's worth the stress i've learned this week in particular that no amount of money can ever compare to your happiness and your well-being of course that's kind of cheesy but it's just true you need to put yourself first really therapeutic this one of the reasons i love baking it's just so relaxing over easter i'm definitely gonna do some baking at home i'm gonna annoy my mum and make a mess of the kitchen i'm gonna have fun whilst doing it and that's what matters <laughs> so where did you apply i applied to i've got another video talking about this in more detail but i'll still tell you now i applied to um university of nottingham obviously because i'm right here i applied to university of east anglia i applied to queen's university belfast and then i also applied to cardiff and then like i said for my last choice and my fifth choice it was Manchester for pharmacy. So I got offers from University of East Anglia and um, Nottingham. And then I ended up withdrawing my Belfast application before I could receive an offer um, because I, I realised I didn't want to go anymore. So yeah, there was no point in waiting to hear back. Hey guys, so I'm with my flatmate, Tien. <laughs> so she moved in literally the other day. Um, <laughs> oh no, no. <laughs> what? <laughs> You guys know that I had a completely empty flat away in the first day of life and now the flat is literally full. Yeah, literally everyone is here now. Yeah. So these are the first set. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these six in and then put the dough in the fridge for a little bit, let it harden, and then get on with the 
Wandies, yeah. But yeah, I hope they're nice. Um, if not, I didn't make them. Oh, that's crazy though, the fact that they're looking for applicants on Tinder. That's crazy. Oh my god, you have yeah, a lot of people just going down Literally just yeah. for the sake of it, just to get on it. Have I told you I've applied for um, team first dates? Oh my god. Well, have they, like, have they accepted you? Like, you no, know? no, I don't really think I'll get it like. But I just thought I'd do it as a laugh. So I finished on, uh, well, put the cookies in the fridge. I'm going to start on the bondies. Hopefully these don't go as bad. We're going to do a bake off. We oh yeah, yeah. We did a bake off. Oh, do you come down with me? Yeah. I wish they didn't put enough butter in the cookies. Uni, I can't remember I told you the day, but Uni have said that they're planning for um, one meter plus for after uh, the summer. Yeah. But it makes no sense how they're planning for social distancing, but festivals and things can still go ahead. Mm. Who knows? So I got the cookies out about I don't know 20 minutes ago, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not really like happy with the way they look. Um, I think they're a bit burnt, but Tien says they're not. <laughs> but to me, I don't know, that's just definitely not burnt. I think they're a little bit overcooked. Yeah, so overcooked, definitely. I was just like picking up to transfer them to the um, plate. And then I felt it, it was like really soft at the bottom, so I cut it open, and it's a really doughy texture. My dear friends, this was trial and error, mainly error. All right, so I think I'm gonna try rolling a ball on my hands instead. That'll make them smaller, definitely. Mm. It's just so greasy. Right, anyway, so next question. So what's one thing you did that you found the most useful? For example, something you could talk about in your personal statement and at interviews. Um, so something that I did was that I would go into my high school and my primary school and I will talk about um, more for high school obviously my medical application and what I'm doing and why I want to apply to medicine and why I worked hard for my GCSEs and why they should too and this is useful as like as a doctor you teach people anyway you do other things apart from your typical medicine so it shows that you've got that sort of interest in teaching and reaching out to the people um and that also shows my passion for medicine in conclusion rolling it in a ball was such a bad idea i'd say a couple more minutes but not much longer what career are you hoping to go into do you have any advice for ob ob street i can't say the word but it's basically over gyn without the gyn <laughs> like i've only been in med school for eight months now I think so I don't really know enough about any specialty to advise anyone but I'd say just do like a bit of research if you can find any work experience on it go ahead asking a first year med student what specialty they want to go in it's kind of like asking a four year old what gender you grow up you don't really know um so yeah I thought I was set on cardio but the first week when we were learning about the upper limb in anatomy we had a lecture from my personal tutor who is a trauma surgeon and he told us so much about Arthur and about trauma surgeries and I was like, that's it, I want to be a trauma surgeon. Ooh, oh no, oh, I just crushed one. Oh my god, that is so, so gutting. As I was getting out of the oven, I crushed it with the mix, obviously it's hot. I am so annoyed at myself. It will cool, ah well. Um, I think I'm going to take a thumbnail pic with these ones, these look fairly good. <laughs> Don't have the expectation that you're going to med school knowing what specialty you want because you've got the whole of your clinical years to learn more about the different specialties, pretty much your whole career to decide what specialty you really want to go into. Okay, so I have just finished. Don't think I like this angle. Right, but anyway, I have just finished the uh, the last tray of cookies. So in total, I've made 24. Yeah, I got bored of putting the white chocolate in the middle because I found it just wasting too much cookie dough because making them so much bigger than they needed to be. Um, and also so much more effort, so I'm just eating it instead because why not? I've practically eaten half a pack of a chocolate. <laughs> oh well. What's the best and worst things about living in halls? I think I've been pretty lucky with my halls, to be honest. But the worst thing, if I was to pick something to complain about, would be circuit laundry. Like, it's still like a breeze. Why am I paying five pounds to wash and dry my clothes? It's actually a scam. I think these are the best ones yet. It's amazing. They just keep getting better and better. Um, the best thing I'd say is really just like the independence and the freedom. Um, at home, I'm lucky in the sense my parents aren't really strict. But I mean independence at uni and like I can cook for myself. Um, just look after myself, living my own, not being dependent on somebody like. I can't explain it. You, you understand when you move out. Like, 
it's just there's no rules you know what i mean it's it's chilled as much as i love being my family i really do enjoy living out okay so i'm gonna start on the blondies finally that bloody two hours later another question so why medicine um why not no i'm kidding so a genuine reason for why i picked medicine is because i do really like sighting and i do really like helping people that's just me it's a crappy answer and it's not an answer you should give um it's not a crappy answer it's just an overused answer and it doesn't really show you've got a vested interest in medicine it's just a general answer but the answer i would have given like at an interview for example is about a personal experience that i went through the family member in hospital which then inspired me to want to do medicine and obviously did more research into it and i found out that all in all it was just a very diverse intellectually stimulating field and it was ever changing i still got the opportunity to interact with people and work with others i feel like i'm actually at an interview right now she's looking good okay so melted butter check so what's the hardest thing about med school uh for me i just think it's the content like there's just a lot and it's a very fast paced and very full on course so you just don't want to fall behind and I don't know if that's a good answer or not, but that's what I think is the hardest thing. Another thing is imposter syndrome and like feeling like you shouldn't be there and comparing yourself to others. There are a lot of intelligent people in med school and you're going to meet a lot of intelligent people throughout the rest of your university career and throughout the rest of your actual career. But you shouldn't let that overwhelm you and you should just remember how hard you've worked to get here and that you deserve to be here. Um, so yeah, like, I'm not gonna lie, I definitely struggle trying not to compare myself to other people. So advice to starting a med pit. Oh crap! <laughs> I'm not good at this multitasking thing, I'm, I'm really not. I just realised I got the measurements so wrong for the cookies. Oops, heck of a lot of sugar. Alright, so it says mix together first and then add the vanilla extract. I would use a whisk, but it just takes way too long to wash up. 210 grams of plain flour. Oh, I've only got, um, oh god, that's not going to go well. I've only got self-raising flour. I'll just put less in. I'm not going to chance it and do it on the table this time. I'm just going to do it the way I know how to do it. going to wash my hands because we don't cross-contaminate in this kitchen. <laughs> There's a lot of flour as well. You know what? I think it's the flour that just makes it all go wrong. Because last time I had the flour with the cookie, that's when it just went downhill. So I take back what I said about the flour. It's actually taking shape really well. So this is the last question I'm going to answer now. So advice for starting a med page, I love yours. First of all, thank you, that is so sweet of you. And the advice I give to anyone for anything really, like if you're gonna start anything at all, is just to make sure that you're passionate about what it is that you're going to do. If you haven't got a genuine passion and a vested interest in what you're going to do, you're not gonna sustain it. Don't do something with the mindset that, oh, someone else has done it and they've been successful, so I'm gonna do it too. It's just not genuine and it's going to show through it, whatever you do that you've not got a genuine interest in what you're doing. Like, I literally always say it and I genuinely do mean it, that I love like having my page, I love having my YouTube channel and now my TikTok and being able to reach out to you guys and to help so many of you with different parts of your application. Like it really is so fun and it's something that I'm really passionate about. Like I've always loved helping people, I've always loved engaging people and I'm really passionate about being able to study medicine and I was passionate throughout the entire process. Now that I'm able to actually do that and help so many of you and so many of you appreciate my help, it's just really great. And also my friends and my family in particular know how much hard work I've put into every post, every video, every TikTok. So when you guys like say really nice things about it, you message me saying thank you or tell me how useful you found something, I genuinely really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much. How many berries do I need? 50 grams, oops. I think that's way more than 50 grams. I might put a little bit more in. Here I am saying it's more than 50 grams, and so I'm gonna add more. People get exhausted trying to figure me out, and I just let them. <laughs> I love TikTok. I had a bit more flour, I don't know what to do. Yeah, I'll tiny bit more. Living the high life. I feel like that was a really bad idea. Just did a bad thing. I regret the thing I did. Guess you're wondering what it is. Tell you what I did. Did a bad thing. It's gonna rise so much. She's gonna be so thick. It's literally gonna be like a cake. Okay, so my camera's gonna die in a bit, but I just thought I'd show it you. This is what it looks like before it goes in the oven. Oh my God. That looks so incredible. 
I'm scared to do a knife test. I don't want to like ruin it. Honestly, it looks so good. Wow. Wow. So excuse how bad the lighting is. I didn't want to move the ring light because it's in a really good position. They look better in real life, trust me. But not done too much of a bad job. But I'd show you from this angle. The camera doesn't do it justice. Okay, so it's half six. Taking me over three hours to get this done. But I'm finally finished. Um, and I'm just gonna show you the blondies again because the angle I got them out before wasn't very good. But yeah, so here it is. And they look absolutely incredible. I've obviously done the knife test in the middle. But they look so good and I can't wait for my family to try them. I definitely will film more like lifestyle videos coming up now I've got my new camera as well. Um, it's just a lot easier to have that big DSLR. Um, yeah, that's it from me. I will see you guys in my next video. And until then, take care. Oh my god, before I go, please remember to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. So it's at itisbar.com underscore on Instagram and then at itisbar.com on TikTok. Um, yeah, bye.